Hey friend, thank you so much for tuning into the Communication Conversation Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley DeLuca. Remember when people started putting avocado on toast and it became the rage? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm still not over avocados, but that's besides the point. That craze is how I want you to feel about intentional communication with your audience. With a stack of library books and a laptop I bought with babysitting money, I started this entrepreneurial journey back in 2009. Slowly, I fell in love with email marketing, and now I'm an email communication strategist. Each week, I'm going to share practical strategies to help you use email marketing to amplify relationships, maximize responses from your audience, and increase overall retention. Holy guacamole, I am seriously so incredibly excited, and I know my toddler is too. (laughs) So let's dive into today's episode. Oh my gosh, guys. You guys are in for such a treat today. We are going to be diving into courses, course launches, and hashtag all of the things around that. You know, I have definitely dipped my toes into courses, and This is something that I truly do believe is still going to continue on. Courses are going to live fully more so and are definitely going to be part of the entrepreneur school belt as time goes on. So that's why I wanted to bring on my really good friend to talk all about courses, how you can really set them up for success, how you can plan them, and just all the things. So thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Share all the things. And yeah, give them give them the good stuff, my friend. Okay, perfect. So my name is Lupita Santana. I am a course creation and launch strategist. So um, I do believe strategy goes both into creating and launching. And um, I have three beautiful babies. I live in Arizona. And yeah, I honestly... I started as a virtual assistant. I, the song, you know, started from the bottom. No, no, no. <laughs> virtual assistant is in the bottom. Let's say virtual assistants save our lives. But I started like at $4 an hour and then just slowly found what it is that I loved. And I just absolutely love course launching and creation. And I love simplifying it and motivating and keeping people accountable so that they can go out and do the thing just do it. And so, um, that's where I come in is I not only give you the strategy, but I give you the accountability because we all know we need that. We will get stuck in the little details and behind the scenes if we don't have the accountability. Yeah. Oh my gosh, seriously. And what I love about your story is I can so deeply relate to it. I started building websites for a hundred dollars a piece and they were five page fully custom, which is like a freaking steal. And I honestly truly believe that, and I'm sure you'll agree with me too on this one, is that like, you have to start off on quote unquote, the bottom, as they say, or, you know, you have to have your starting point and there's no shame in the game. There's no shame of where you originally started off at, or even where you're at right now. Like you can't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter 26. Like it just, it doesn't work. So I want to dive into specifically why courses, like, I feel like there is so many ways that people can share their content to be able to serve their people. So why do you believe that courses are a really effective way in order to be able to build your audience while also to nurturing them, educating them and all that fun stuff? Yeah. So there's two reasons. So there's, I always say you have one client in different journeys. So a lot of my clients, you know, they, I even hear them say something like, oh, I feel like I'm speaking to do to two different people. And I'm like, you're not, you're speaking to the same person in different journeys. And as coaches, especially as service providers, having a course, um, and having other offerings provides you the ability to really serve your audience. And so a lot of people are going to see, for example, my VIP day, um, or someone's coaching package and see that it's a four figure product, a five figure product. And they're not going to, they're, they're going to feel and I, and I'm going to say this because I've been there that they haven't made it because they can't pay for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and when you create, you create something like a course where you package up this knowledge and wisdom and gifting that you have to teach other people, you really show up and serve them where they're at. And I think that's so important. I I believe people over profit, um, service over sale and impact over income. And so it's about creating 
the opportunity for people to be transformed with what you do. Um, because God put you here for a reason and you're doing it, you know, you're impacting people already. So it gives them that opportunity. And then let's talk about you. It gives you the opportunity to book off like a month for vacation instead of thinking I need one-on-one clients. I need, you know, coaching clients. I need to book my group coaching program. It gives you the opportunity if you stay consistent and dedicate yourself some time to scale this course, to be able to take time off and be with your family. And for me, like my, the, the reason why I do this is for my kids. So it wouldn't make sense if I was constantly working. Um, And so sometimes there are seasons of working harder and that's absolutely, I believe that those that um, work hard, like great things will come to them. Absolutely. But there's also times to rest and trust that you've planted the seeds, that you've done the hard work and that it's time to like enjoy the fruit of your labor. And so courses allow you to do that. Courses allow you to really scale and allow you to have some flexibility and allow you to just be creative in other areas. Like, okay, I launched my course, you know, I'm, this is my third launch. I'm setting it up for evergreen. Um, so now I want to, I want to create this really high end mastermind and I'm going to put some work into that and I'm going to charge. I want to charge $15,000. What do I have to do to make that mastermind happen? Now you have the time to really think about it. So yeah, just flexibility, freedom. And, um, and I will say it's being diligent and committing to the process. So you launch one time you get I, a friend of mine's like, I launched and I got three students. I'm like three freaking students. That's amazing. Imagine having those three students every week to your house, like, over so that you could teach them. That's a big deal. So the thing that you need to celebrate is that you freaking did it. You went out and you launched the thing. You believed in yourself enough to do what a lot of people dream of doing. So instead of saying, I failed because I only got three people, I'll say, I freaking did it. I got three people. So now what do I need to do to continue scaling and growing on beyond that? Yeah. Um, and so don't let those like kind of expectations rise too high. Um, and then don't let not meeting those like goals. Um, what am I trying to say? Like um, discourage you to yep. keep moving forward, you know? Yeah. So diligence is the number one key to courses for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. I absolutely love that. I think one of your statements about like people over profits, that little spiel right there, that needs to be on a freaking t-shirt. I would yeah. definitely <laughs> buy that or a sticker, please. I, I have room on my laptop right now to put that sticker, like literally. Yes, let's do it. Oh my gosh, I'm so doing it. <laughs> totally needs to be a sticker, not like everything else in the world. But one of the things that I'll mention that you talked about is, yeah, it's especially goals because like, I'll be really honest. Um, when I first launched my like very first course that I kind of took really serious, like more serious than probably all the other little things I did, you know, I only got like, I don't know, like three to five people in it. And I was like, holy guacamole, three to five people said yes to what I'm creating and like what I'm doing. And they're like buying into the mission of what yeah. I what I have going on. And I think what ends up happening, especially um, regardless of where you're at, doesn't matter how big your audience is or your income or anything, you know, sometimes we can get discouraged because mm-hmm. we have this number and we feel like we have to hit the number in order for something to be successful. Yeah. And sometimes, yes, you have to hit a certain number to be able to cover your back end expenses for a right. launch or for a thing. And I totally get that. Um, even though I'm not, I'm not a numbers gal by any sort of the imagination <laughs> with that stuff. I'm like, here, I just tell my CFO, I'm like, here, um, here's some reason I'm thinking, is this right? Did I actually add and subtract correctly? Kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Um, but within that, it, I think it really is as an extent. Oh, so cute. Cute. <laughs> it, it really comes back to like, again, feeling appreciative and knowing that like you now have information and data that you can now scale and do the next thing. Absolutely. So you need that data. (laughs) Yeah, that that's key. So, okay. I got, I got two questions and you can pick which one you want to answer first. So my first question for you before I forget it (laughs) is, um, when do you think people or where do you think people should be at in their journey in order to be able to invest into doing like a VIP day with you to map out the course day. Because obviously I, I can go out and create a course today, regardless of where I'm at. It could be like, oh yeah. But like when you want to do it properly, when you wanted this to be part of your legacy, when should, when's the right time for someone to come to you? What, what assets or knowledge and things should they have when they come to you? Mm-hmm. And the second thing is, is 
What kind of data points should somebody be thinking about that they should be like, ooh, okay, I need to pay attention to that when they're launching or creating a course? Absolutely. You can answer however you want. To yeah, just- so I'll go for the first one. I apologize for my Slack notifications. Um, the first one, you know, when they can... so. When you know you should launch a course, if you are a coach or a service provider, um, I'll answer like that tidbit and then I'll go into the VIP day part. So one, I think it's a calling in a way where you have this desire um, to, to grow and scale in this way, because a lot of people, there's so many directions that you can go and so many options. And so it has to be something that really grabs your interest and that you're, um, you, uh, want to kind of experiment with business is all about ex- experimenting. Honestly, there's no proven way that works for everybody. Um, and so having that desire to try it is number one. So don't do it because you're, you're, you saw somebody do it. Don't do it because you're, even your coach is telling you to do it, do it because it feels good. Like it feels like something you want to try. It might feel uncomfortable, but it feels good. It's like, okay, yes, okay, yes. okay, okay. I want to do this. Like, I want to do- okay. <laughs> I got the message. I have this on my heart. I'm yeah. going to try it. And, and you're, I mean, you become unattached to that also too. You're just like, okay, this is like a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm just exactly. going to try it. And like, if I'm exactly. not, it's totally fine. So yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. That was perfect. And then another thing is, so a lot of the questions that I get is like, okay, how do I package up what I do for my clients, especially from coaches? Like, I just don't really have a process. Okay. Let's create a process for what you do. And so a lot of coaches have this like, oh, it's by client. But however, you still show up a certain way to serve your clients. So that way needs to become a framework. And the way that we're able to really extract that information is I ask like 5 million questions. First of all, we talk to your past clients at the transformation that they experienced, because with a course, you really need to think about the transformation that you're going to deliver. Even if you're teaching someone how to crochet, you know, the transformation that they'll experience learning this, whether it's perfecting their skill, trying a new hobby, it has to be attached to like an emotion right? Like you're going to learn how to do something that you saw your grandma doing, or you're going to learn how to do something that you want to teach your kids to do. You're going to feel like, uh, you know, like you're a bad ass trying to do something like crochet. You know, I don't know. I wanted to try that forever and I still haven't, but there's a transformation in everything you do. Like even from coding to teaching someone how to get over past traumas to just everything. And so really defining that transformation through the services that you're already out already offer and being able to define that and then put it into this course. Cause I think every course needs a framework. The reason being yeah. is because you want to be able to guide your students in a way that makes sense in a way that they can remember, you know, it's like phase one, you're going to go through this phase two, you're going to go through this. And so now it, when are you ready to invest in a VIP day? So I will be launching my course at the end of the year, on how to do what I do in my VIP days. Um, So how do, how do you know you can, you're ready is one. I do think that someone needs like my prerequisites is like, you need a team member. You need a team member because you're going to walk away. We spend an entire day. Like you get me for six hours. We start the morning, we do the strategy, and then we start implementing. We start setting stuff up. We start creating, we start doing. And then once the VIP day is done, you're going to have a list of everything you need to go do. And so, and it, I have ADHD, so that stresses me out. Okay. Lists and thinking of all the things I have to do. I know I can do it, but girl, washing the dishes, getting to the sink takes me five hours. Okay. (laughs) So like sometimes it's a lot, it's overwhelming. And so you have to be ready to kind of delegate and to get a little bit of help. And this doesn't have to be a full-blown team. This can be just for a project, whatever, but you have support and support can also look like, like sometimes my husband, (laughs) My husband has to sit down next to me while I work so that I can work and get stuff done because sometimes I need that accountability. That's an ADHD thing. Thing. If you have ADHD, if you're listening and you are late, please let me know and tell me I'm not alone because I know I can't be the only one, um, but accountability, right? And then number two is this income, this income, this investment. I always say this. I've seen clients spend over ten thousand dollars on launches, right? When they, when I used to do the, I still do it. The, the full blown support. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like my little secret offer that I just told you guys about. But <laughs> that plus ads plus 
copywriter plus all of this stuff is like 10,000 or more. Um, and so if you want this like full blown launch. Y'all know that I love my avocados, sea turtles, and coffee. But when it comes to email marketing, there's nothing I love more than ConvertKit and their free t-shirt. It's my favorite email marketing platform because they make it so incredibly easy to create emails, sell products, set up sequences, do automations, literally hashtag all of the things. And as a listener, you can have access to an exclusive trial so you can build a relationship with your list and they'll come to know what random things you love too. So all you have to do is hop on over to ashleykdeluca.com forward slash convert kit to get started with your free trial. That's it. Simple, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. Now let's get back over to the good stuff. Now, what I say is if you do have the capital to invest, realize that it might take up to three launches to, to make that back because you're going to have to keep investing every launch. Mm -hmm. However, when you make, I've seen people get six students in the door the first time and the third time they're making $140,000. So it pays off, right? It's worth it, but you have to keep going. You have to keep trying. Don't, don't have like the, you know, this, the squirrel thingy that people say, um, where you get distracted, like (laughs) stick to it, stick to it, put it on the calendar, put it on your promotional calendar. Every entrepreneur needs to have a promotional calendar on their wall, but, um, commit to it. And then if you have that capital, so my, for example, my VIP day is, um, it's actually going up right now. It's at 1500. It's going up to 2,500. Um, because I just adding a ton of more stuff to it. Um, and so, but that's a one time, like that is one entire day for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And if that makes sense, do it. And if it doesn't get a course to walk you through it, get an accountability partner to walk, to, to walk with you and, and find a team to support you. You can still do it without a VIP day. Everybody can do it. I honestly, anybody. So, um, but more, more importantly, most importantly, you need to make sure that you have like the commitment and drive to do it. What was it? Oh, okay. Now second question, data, 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 data. I don't like compiling data, but I like looking at the data. It's like, you know, I don't like working <laughs> out, but I won't, you know, what if my, oh, you know what, is this, is this an appropriate, can I say, well, my trainer, if it's not, you can just take it out. But my trainer was like yesterday in the gym, she was like, that's right. Let's go working on a booty that they can grab. And I'm like, okay, okay. Well, I guess made my squat. I squatted her a little longer, you know, to, to build the endurance, but it's, um, with data, it takes a lot of work to pay attention to it. It takes a lot of work to compile the data, but it's worth it. So what data should you be looking at? Okay. Let's talk about, I'm trying, trying to see where to start emails, emails. I mean, you know, Ashley emails are, you don't, first of all, please don't launch without emails guys. Don't worry about emailing twice on the early bird day on the day where the fast bonus action is going away. Don't email is good. Email is great. And email is the true, the only thing that can give you like the true numbers of what's going on in your business. Okay. Because It's just people, if people care about you and want to hear from you, they're going to open your email. So with emails, let's say you want to calculate how much you might make for a launch. So in the industry, there's one to one, two, and 3%, 1% of your list, 2% of your list, or 3% of your list. How I like to to look at it is good, better, best. The good is 1%, better is 2%, best is 3%. Um, Now this is if you're engaged with your list, right? Um, And, and then you guys might not like this idea, but you want to like make that even more focused. So you want to, if you're doing a five day challenge, if you're doing a webinar, if you're doing, you're going to go off of that number. So the people that sign up for those things that are leading up to your launch, that's the one, two, 3%. Now, if you go beyond that, I've seen clients, I've had clients do 10%. I've had clients do 13%. I've had clients do 7%. And I've had clients do 1%. I had a client who launched her first uh, course for $400, a little less, like three, no, 497. And she had 74 students on her first launch. Um, and so, yeah, it's 
you never know like how you're going to, but she was engaged. She sent out emails weekly. She grew her list. She had other offerings. Um, so, so you want to just be as narrow as possible, focused as possible. Okay. Now, does that mean that you stop emailing your list about the launch? No, we definitely sprinkle in some love in there and some invitations to join you, but we're going off of the numbers of that focused group. And then, um, and then after that, you look at just how many people are opening your emails, how many people are clicking your links, um, how many people went to your sales page, how many people are converting from your sales page over to the checkout cart, how many people are actually checking out. So you want to look at all of that because then you're able to say, okay, on my sales page, I got like, I had a, a client, he got like 2000 people on his sales page and he had three signups. So what's going on? And so we did a like little mini sales page audit. So I was like, all right, here's the main problem. Now we know where the problem is. People yep. aren't making it past the sales page. Something's not, not fitting here. So we installed hot jar. You guys need to look into hot jar. It's magical. You put it into your sales page. It lets you know, like in the back end, it lets you know where they're dropping off. And it's just an embed code that you put into the, the HTML section. Um, and it lets you know where they're dropping off. So if they're, they're making it to the half of the page and you don't have a call to action and they don't scroll all the way back, you lost them. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's the numbers are like, it takes work, but they're beautiful. When you know this data, you can make educated decisions. And one thing I don't recommend doing that I I've had clients do in the past is they go post about it in a Facebook group and, Oh, give me recommendations. And then they get 500 recommendations and they want to do all of them. And I'm like, no, no, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at your ideal client. What are they saying? You know? And so it's not about what everybody thinks. It's about what your ideal person thinks. And so, yeah, that's, that's my whole spiel on numbers. They, <laughs> that was so good. It. That was so good. And I definitely agree with you. And that goes a lot back to segmentation, you know, mm-hmm. segmenting your list, knowing who's who, what's going on. And that's something that I'm working on right now with one of my clients is she did an like this, um, you know, this offer launch for this digital product. And yeah. she's like, all these people are buying it, but I don't even know who they are, like what their business is, what they're doing. I don't know what to pitch them next. So that first thing that we did was put together a survey to figure out who are you? Like, what do you need? Like what's going on in your world? Yeah. I think that's really incredibly important. But I also love as well, and I want to pull the string of asking for feedback in Facebook groups is like the worst, the yeah. worst thing that you can do. If you're going to do it, pick a small group, like a small group that has your ideal clients in it or people that you really, really respect and love. And that like are, you know, even if you're not in like a paid like circle, you can still reach out to. And so one of the things that I like to do is like when I'm asking for feedback, I only ask for feedback within my two little circles that I'm in. So I'm in a private networking um, community and then I'm in a mastermind. That is the only two places I ask for feedback. Um, I ask for collaborations all the time with my people because yeah. I want to collaborate with my people in my community and get their, you know, and ask them specific things or serve them back in different ways. But other than that, keep your feedback within your little circle, because if not, you're going to, just as you mentioned, you're going to be chasing 500 different ideas, 500 different things. And everyone in their grandma has an opinion, by the way, and not every single one of them is justified or right or fit your person. So I yeah. absolutely love that. Um, so as we go through the process of closing this, this has been so incredibly helpful and I absolutely love the strings that you've pulled and like, I just feel like they're so incredibly important. So do you have one other big mistake that you see people making in the industry that you would love for people to stop doing when it comes to courses? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Listen on your look. I, okay. I came up with this. I don't know if it's a thing, but it's strategy stacking is what I like to call it. Okay. You start simple. Let's simplify the, why do people hate launching? It's because we're overcomplicating it. It does not have to be complicated. You don't have to launch on Instagram. You don't have to launch on LinkedIn. Screw like screw Pinterest for now. We'll come back to that, babe. When you have the team to help, let's go over back to the email. Let's go to to your network. Let's go to your connections. Um, and let's stop focusing on all of the strategies in the first, second, third launch. I say this, okay, let's narrow down on one to two strategies. You want to do affiliate strategy. Perfect. Let's do that. You want to do, um, you want to go do a five day challenge. All right. That's it. No more. We're doing that. Okay. 
So after that, let's say we do that first launch, second launch, let's say we want to do, um, um, Facebook ads. So then we do Facebook ads, right? And then that's it. And then the third launch, actually, let's take a break from experimenting. Okay. Let's just do those three again. And then the fourth launch we can, and so we can, you know, try something new. Let's, we need to stop overwhelming ourselves with so many things. And this is from, so this is from a personal thing because I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and ADHD. And I realized that if I wanted to to be sane and be balanced and not burn out every five minutes is I need to st- to stop trying to do all the things. So for example, I've been working on my website and I, and I had a call with a friend yesterday and, and I was like, and she does websites and she's super good. And she's like, you're overcomplicating it. You get, you're getting stressed out. You're overcomplicating it. Just do a one pager. You're just, you're just selling your VIP day. Just do a one pager. And I'm like, oh, that's so genius. How is it that I, I was creating like seven different pages for what, you know? And so let's just simplify it. Let's simplify it. Let's come back to the basics. Um, you don't have to do everything. And it makes sense. Our, we're not machines. I tell this to my people all the time. We're not machines. If you're working right now and you've been working all day, get off, get off the computer and just go (laughs) outside to the sun or the moon. One of them, please. You know, like let, we're not robots. We're not supposed to know everything. We're not supposed to have perfect successful launches every time. Like these expectations need to get out of here. And we need to recognize that we're imperfect and that we, yet we have gifts and we have ways that we get to show up for our people. Like we have this privilege of showing up and serving and loving on our audience. Um, and that's the important part. Like let's, and then also like money is good. Like money is a tool. Money is what's going to fund the lifestyle that I want for my family, but it shouldn't be the goal. And if you remove money, it'll make it that much funner to show up and serve. It really will. You're going to have fun doing it. You're going to want to serve. And if, if you don't, maybe, maybe you should go get another job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, yeah, that gets my stamp of approval. A hundred percent gold star. Yes. A hundred. I am here for it. So <laughs> as we wrap, as we close, because we could talk for hours, I am sure. Um, let me know where we can find you, where other yeah. my listeners can stalk you and all of that really fun stuff. Okay. So you can look me up on Instagram. Um, it's Lupita Santana. So it's Lupita with two A's at the end, period Santana. Santana, Lupita Santana. Maybe that's easier. But, um, <laughs> It'll be down real, below, guys. I say real be Mexican, like, okay? I'm yes. proud and loud and Latina. <laughs> but um, so you can find me there or you can go to my website at Lupita Santana. Lupita Normal, okay? No double A, lupitasantana.com. Oh my gosh, perfect. Well, thank you so incredibly much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for dropping so many truth bombs and so many good things. I absolutely love having you in my corner and part of my world. So thank you so, so incredibly much. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys. Until the next episode, I will talk to you guys later. See ya. so much for tuning into today's episode. Listen, if you love today's content, be sure to drop me a review and include your website URL. Important note, include your website URL. I would love to support you in return because listen, this is what it is all about. Now, guys, I just love you so incredibly much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And until the next episode, I hope you have a totally awesome day. No pun intended. (laughs) 